There's your white tail flashing right now. Oh, and these guys are going up the stream here. Well, the one we're watching right now, she's making her red, and you'll see her turn sideways and flap her tail, and she's moving a small pickup load worth of rock. And when she gets that moved, she'll have a big hole dug, and she'll deposit her eggs in there. Did you see the two big stripes of brown rock? In the middle, do you see two green flows of water? Okay, in the first green flow, there's two big fish right down here that are playing around. Do you see them? They're going this way, they're moving down. There are some males that have been jockeying in and out of her nest to see if they can spawn with her. Once she drops her eggs, they have to cover it with milt. And it they, they has to happen simultaneously so that they fertilize the eggs. Oh, he's coming right at us, right there. In the white, in the white, there he is, in the white, in the white. It's hard to realize how well you have it until it's gone. Depending on what the it is, sometimes it is not recoverable. That deep, almost overwhelming love at first sight, pheromones flowing while your culinary synapses are nearly collapsing upon themselves. Uh, did I just say culinary? Are there such a thing? Culinary synapses? There might not be. And if there aren't, there should be, because I'd swear my brain goes into overdrive whenever I'm going to have salmon. I'm Paul Norberg here to talk about salmon festivals and some of the different things that they can mean. Like I mentioned, food. I like to think of it as brain food because it seems to help me think better. Maybe it's the satisfied feeling I have after a meal of well-prepared salmon. Some people come to salmon festivals simply for a tasty meal. But if you ask Jay Minthorn, he'll tell you that there's a lot more to it than the word implies. First thing you have to do is learn what a salmon is. What is the history of the salmon? What does it mean? What does it mean to the people? It means a way of life, food to nourish yourself. And we share these foods, whether it be here, Alaska, Canada, the ocean. Everybody eats these foods for subsistence. And I think that's the thing that we have to realize. This is a source of food for the living and we have to all work cooperatively to protect and restore these fish so that we'll always have them. You know, to us, salmon is a, a part of a ceremony. It's, it's a, a religion to us. I think that's the difference. And what a difference that is when we contemplate others' perspectives. Jeremy Five Crows talks more about the various differences happening. The, what the tribes wanted to accomplish by uh, partnering with Metro to put on the Waikanishman Village was to show uh, how salmon affect our culture as well. So it's not just like uh, you know a scientific or a, you know the food, but it's actually a, a deep part of the culture of the tribes. And what we we hope the message that people take away from that is that. Uh, the salmon are important enough to be part of a culture and that how, how can they be part of the culture of everybody here in the Northwest. Several activities were added to the festival agenda to accomplish this goal. These are the same size of net right here you've got in your hand. Uh -huh. They used to catch salmon right out here at Salilo Falls. Sometimes you get three, four fish in there. We have a net tying demonstration uh, that where people, the, the, a tribal fisher actually ties the old style nets and the old style knots uh, and makes other traps and weirs and whatnot. Um, we have uh, weavers uh, the, the making baskets that traditionally you know, dried salmon would be stored in. And then there's also the, the, the broader based uh, celebratory aspects of salmon culture with like the drumming and the singing that are all part of that. I think that if people are, are separated from the salmon, there it's a much harder sell for to make the sacrifices that are required to save them. I mean, it's going to be it's not going to be cheap uh, to actually fix a lot of the problems that the salmon are, are uh, and the obstacles that they face. But if people kind of have a connection, like a spiritual connection, a cultural connection to the salmon, then they're more willing to make those sacrifices and to have the like the political will to make those choices. If we can bolster that connection, people will uh, hopefully make the, make the choices and uh, for the, you know, this, to sustain this uh, amazing species. And it's all connected. Without all of the connections, then we're, we're all in big trouble. 
I guess I'm I'm an eternal optimist, but the but it's it's uh, it's hard to be that right now. The uh, the, the the environmental impacts that that the salmon are facing right now are very. Uh, daunting to the salmon and seeing the continued numbers decline I mean, going from the fact that we had all you know 15 to 20 million salmon returning every year before the treaties were signed to today is, is very disheartening taking a look at these more traditional methods of cooking and smoking the salmon is a lot of fun I'm getting hungry there's some inspirational methods going on here it's a good thing no one's tried to patent any of them yet my favorite is the stick method. The natural smoked flavors are quite piquant. It's the simplest method I've found that keeps you from running to the spice cabinet. Well, the beauty of this is how simple it is for you to be able to cook salmon like the native people that were here before. Attending festivals like this brings a new perspective to the pleasure I have when I sit down to eat one of my favorite meals. This is Paul Norberg bringing you the tools to be sustainable today.